So as a knee specialist physiotherapist, in this video, I'm gonna bring you my top five tips for special tests at the knee joint. Let's go. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Here are my top five special tests for the knee, starting with number one, the Lachman's test. So the Lachman test is my go-to test for diagnosing ACL, anterior cruciate ligament injuries at the knee for two reasons. Number one, I find it's the easiest with handling, but the second reason is because it actually gives you two ways of diagnosing an ACL injury. So to do this test, we lie the patient supine. Crucially, I always put my knee under the patient's knee because it means that the patient's knee is stable and I don't have to use lots of strength to actually hold it up. We then put one hand in a C shape around the distal femur or patella so that my thumb and index finger are on the joint line of the knee. Then the lower hand, the testing hand, I put my thumb on the tibial tuberosity, wrap the fingers gently around the calf and then we provide an anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. Now I do this test both slow and fast, and here's why. So it's tied into those two ways of getting a positive result. First of all, if the patient demonstrates increased laxity on this test relevant to the other side, that can be a positive result for an ACL tear. Now the second positive result is if you have a lack of end feel. Now to explain this, imagine you had a piece of string in your hands. When you pull it tight, you should feel a tug on the string. And it's the same with the ACL. If it's intact, when we do the Lachman's test, we should feel that tug telling us that the ACL is stopping excessive movement at the knee. So therefore, if we don't feel that tug, if instead we have a soft or an absence of end feel, that can also tell us that the ACL is torn and that would be a positive result. And personally, I like to use the slow test to feel the laxity and the slightly firmer, quicker test to check the end feel. So how effective is this test in practice? Well, Socalital identified that it has an 81% sensitivity and an 85% specificity, but Mulligan et al from 2015 highlighted that if you focus just on the end feel component of the test, it has an 81% sensitivity, but a 100% specificity. So a test well worth learning. So test number two, what's the best way of diagnosing a meniscal tear? McMurray's? Thessaly's? Well, actually, Smith et al. in their 2015 systematic review highlighted that generally, meniscal tests have quite poor validity. They highlighted that McMurray's test had a sensitivity of 61% and a specificity of 84%, whereas your Thessaly's test had a sensitivity of 75% and a specificity of 87%. So from their study, the test with the highest combined sensitivity and specificity was joint line palpation, which had sensitivity and specificity of 83%. And actually, this is my go-to method for diagnosing meniscal tears other than what I'm gonna tell you in top tip number five. So the idea with joint line palpation is that we're gonna have our patient lying supine, we're gonna flex their knee to 90 degrees, and then either using our thumb or our fingers, we're gonna work our way around the medial and lateral joint line. Now we're looking for pinpoint exquisite tenderness, which basically means that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, ow. It's very painful on a specific Point. However, the joint line palpation itself isn't the only thing we need for a positive result. Crucially, it has to be in conjunction with a relative history. So to make an example of this, let's say I was walking around in my bedroom and I banged the side of my knee against the bed. Well, I'm probably gonna have exquisite tenderness on the joint line if it was the joint line that I hit on the bed. Does that mean I have a meniscal tear? No. So for more on this, make sure you stay around for top tip number five. So top tip number three, the active straight leg raise test. Quite simply here, if your patient has had an acute trauma, you wanna make sure that they can lie supine and then actively extend their knee, lifting their leg off the bed. If they can't, it could be due to a couple of reasons. It could be due to a quadriceps tendon rupture, a patella tendon rupture, or a patella fracture, because all of them rely on the extensor mechanism in order for extension to happen at the leg. So if they can't do an active straight leg raise, consider have they injured one of those. So top tip number four is the MCL or valgus stress test for the medial collateral ligament. 
So we find in practice that the medial collateral ligament is injured a lot more commonly than the lateral collateral ligament. That's because it's much longer. It's also the main stabilizing structure on the medial side of the knee, whereas on the lateral side of the knee, we also have structures like the anterolateral ligament and the posterior lateral corner to add to the stability there. So to do this test, as you can see here, we simply ask our patient to lie supine, we flex their knee to approximately 15 to 20 degrees, and then our lower hand around the distal tibia helps us to provide a gentle valgus force to the medial side of the knee in order to stress the MCL. Now, there are three different grades of MCL injuries which could happen if there was a positive result. Grade one, or a simple sprain, is where there isn't any major gapping at the knee when we do this test. A grade two injury would be where there is between five to 10 millimeters of gapping when we do the test. And a grade three is considered a more serious injury where there is more than 10 millimeters of gapping. And for the grade three patients, you may well find that they're put in a brace to try and help that MCL heal. And top tip number five, there are many other tests that we haven't gone through yet. The dial test for the posterior lateral corner, posterior cruciate ligament tests such as the SAG sign or a posterior draw. What about patellofemoral joint pain or patellofemoral instability tests? Well, actually, the key thing I really want to stress for this top tip is that a good subjective history is golden when it comes to your differential diagnosis. So for example, many top clinicians highlight that you can really accurately predict an ACL injury without doing any testing at all. And that comes from a really good subjective history. So for example, a patient that has had an acute trauma, particularly a valgus or inward twisting injury with immediate ballooning swelling, with the inability to play on, perhaps with some ongoing instability, is a clear indication for an ACL injury. What about meniscal tear? Well, here we might be looking for a patient who has had a twisting injury on a flex knee. We're also looking for them to have particular pinpoint palpation on the joint line of the knee, which is where the meniscal tear may have probably occurred. And we can then back that up with our joint line palpation, as we said in top tip number two. So when it comes to patellofemoral pain, for example, we're probably looking for our patient to describe pain around the patellofemoral joint itself, perhaps on the back of the patella they're pointing to their pain, or perhaps even on the medial side. What about patella tendinopathy? We're expecting our patient to point to their patella tendon as the area that hurts with a relevant history of patella tendon overuse, overactivity, or perhaps a period of increased demand placed on that tendon. Effectively, we're looking for our objective tests to be the second part of our diagnosis. The crucial first part is the subjective history. And from that, we can try and gain an impression to then allow us to choose what objective tests we want to do. And if you want more on the subject of history, make sure you check out our incredible video with the fantastic orthopedic consultant, Mr. Tricker, who goes through some brilliant subjective tips for you. And that can be found at the end of this video. So guys, that's it from me. If you want even more on the subjective and the objective assessment of the knee, please check out our fantastic videos with orthopedic surgeon, Mr. Tricker, and you can find these over here for you to watch anytime. Otherwise, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out our Instagram at Clinical Physio and our website clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.